What's up you guys and welcome back to another vlog. So today is Monday the 3rd of August I believe and first things first I can't believe it's already August. It's the strangest thing because I feel like this year has gone by quickly yet really slowly at the same time especially with this whole pandemic thing. I don't know if anybody else feels like this but it's like damn we're already in August but at the same time it's like we've really been going through this pandemic and having these restrictions for this long now like it's it's a weird strange feeling. But anyways as I said today is a Monday I'm actually about to head out and go and run some errands and just get things done that I need to get done for the week like I gotta go do grocery shopping, gotta go pick up some of my essentials that I need and I figured that I would bring you guys along with me. So yes, I'm about to head off to the mall. I'll try and vlog as much as I can. My plan is to go and do my grocery shopping, to go to Kmart because I want to go and see if they have any other little bits and pieces that I want to pick up. And then I need to go to Priceline as well to pick up some skincare things as well. So that is my plan. It is currently 10.30, which is not too bad. I also want to go and get a coffee as well because I haven't had breakfast, but I wasn't super hungry when I woke up this morning. And also at some point today, I need to do my nails because with all this like hand washing and hand sanitizing that I've been doing, my hands are so dry and my cuticles are like in pain. I took my gel polish off and I was like, wow, I just need to nourish these and moisturize them for a few days before I paint them again. So I need to paint my nails again. And it feels very strange because they are so short. But yeah, that is what my plan is for today. So with that being said, let's get started. All right, you guys. So I just got to the mall and I'm gonna be wearing a mask today. Typically in the past, I haven't really felt the need to wear a mask. Um, but I'll explain more as to what the situation is. So yeah, I'm gonna go inside. I'm really hungry. I'm gonna get something to eat straight up because my tummy is grumbling. So let's go. That's so familiar. Something that's got me wanting to know you. I can't put my finger on it, but it feels Hey guys, I just got back from being inside. I feel like I'm so out of breath. It feels kind of hot today. One thing I do want to say is that I am very impressed with my makeup because it's like barely, if anything, transferred onto my mask. But right now I'm actually going to go to another mall to do my grocery shopping because I couldn't find what I was looking for here. So we're off to go do that. I just finished doing my grocery shopping, just picked up like little extra bits and pieces that I needed and now I'm about to head home. Today's little errand run and like grocery run took a lot longer than I thought it would because I went to like two different malls to try and find things that I needed, specifically like my conditioner and shampoo for my hair. But I couldn't find it anywhere, so I'm just gonna have to order it online after all. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and drive on home now. I did pick myself up a boba bubble tea. Mmm, good stuff. All right, so I'm gonna head home and I'll catch up with you guys there. All right, you guys, as you can see, I am home. And firstly, can I just say, I am very impressed by the fact that my makeup today did not transfer onto my mask. Like, it's done a pretty good job. But yeah, I'm just very shocked. I thought all the makeup was going to come off my nose and go into the mask. But yeah, nothing. It still looks just as good as it did when I put it on this morning. But anyways, yes, as I said, I'm home now. Um, I'm going to quickly show you guys what I bought today when I went out. So I actually really needed to get more of these pimple patches. Well, 
This isn't the usual one that I get. I usually get one from a brand called Spot Medic. I think that's what it's called. Usually I have these on stock for whenever I get the random rogue pimple that decides to pop up around that time of the month. But I ran out and every time I've gone to Priceline, there's never any in stock. So I feel like more people know about them now and they're buying them and there's just no more stock. So I'm going to test these ones out. I actually specifically had to go to Chemist Warehouse for these. However, the ones that I usually get are $10, like $9.95 per packet. However, these are $5.95 per packet and they come with 24 patches. So yeah, I picked up three. I said I was going to try them, but to be honest, I have visited so many different price lines and I just can't find those little hydrocolloid stickers in stock anywhere, so I figured I may as well just stock up on these. But um, they look to be pretty much the same hydrocolloid patches. These ones say that they do have a tea tree oil in them though, which as most of us know, that is good for pimples. So yeah, I don't know. I feel like I generally don't have any issues with my skin. If you guys have been with me for a long time, then you probably would have seen my whole skin journey, what I've been through in the past. Um, my skin's pretty well behaved, however, lately with like lack of sleep, stress, and also winter, my skin doesn't like winter, it needs humidity. So when the air gets really cold, I tend to break out, which is strange. But typically it's only like the one-off hormonal pimple here or there. However, I just like to have these just in case um, because they're really good at getting rid of things overnight. But as I was saying, yeah, that's the first thing that I got. I also went to Kmart and I picked up three of these little containers that solid it's inside i just want to kind of keep this at my where is it oh yeah over there where my kettle is for like when i make my coffees teas that kind of thing so i got three of them one for tea coffee and my sweetener onto groceries i was craving like chips and dip so i bought some corn chips I also got more of my volumizing powder. If you guys know, you know. I saw these as well. I have never tried these before. I think they're new, but they're basically pretzels, but squished without the fancy knot. <laughs> I also just picked up some blueberry slices. These are good for like when I'm on the go, if I just want to have something quickly in the mornings or just as like a snack. Also stocked up on some almond milk. I typically buy like three to four at a time so then I don't have to keep going back and buying milk every week. And I also wanted to try this. This is from No Shoe. This is their low carb pancake mix, 99% sugar free. You guys know that I love to have protein pancakes, but I figured that I would try this out. And with that, I also got more of my maple syrup, the sugar free one. Still tastes as good as a regular maple syrup, even though this one is sugar free. And then I also got some candy, which I don't usually buy this stuff, but I guess I'm kind of craving it at the moment, so yeah, gummies. So I got gummies, but these are like a healthier alternative, I guess, because there's less sugar. As you guys might have heard me talk about in previous vlogs, I still eat what I want, but I just pick healthier options. So still, this isn't like that good for you, but the fact that it has less sugar, it's better than having something with all the sugars in it. But in saying that, I did treat myself with some M&M, like pretzel flavored, M&M's. I saw these and they're new and I don't know why but lately I've been craving like sweet stuff so yeah I had to try those. Also got myself some makeup remover pads. I don't use these specifically to remove makeup but I do get a bit of micellar cleansing water on these and run these around my hairline because sometimes I do find that even though I cleanse my face really well on a regular basis if you aren't cleaning up around your hairline as well, makeup tends to build up this. And obviously I don't wash my hair every night, so it's really important for me to wipe up that area as well. I got Milo because, yeah, I love Milo. And then I have some diced bacon that I just like to keep to throw into like pastas or fried rice. Lemons as well because I like to cut these up and put them in water in the mornings. As you guys can see, this is my little fruit bowl. Those bananas probably need to get thrown out because, yeah, they don't look too great anymore. And I did get some more apples as well. Nurofen, because you never know when you're going to need that. I also picked up this sweet potato and cashew dip. As I said, I was craving chips and dips, so this is the one that I chose. 
I don't know why this is so squished right now, but I'm just going to have a Caesar salad for dinner. And I also bought some chicken tenders so that I can throw those in the oven and kind of chop them up and put them with this as well. Just something really quick and easy. And then I did buy some more frozen blueberries and some spinach. I do like to put spinach in my smoothies, as you guys may know. And I like to keep this in the freezer because obviously it lasts for longer. If I keep it in the fridge, it's going to wilt and die quicker and then, yeah. Keeping things for smoothies in the freezer is so much easier. I even have a ton of like chopped up bananas in there as well to throw into smoothies. Had to buy some more whitening powder and then last but not least, some tampons. I've never tried this brand before, but I'm trying to go for things that are more natural because I typically get like the Libra brand ones, but these ones are apparently better for you because they're made from natural cotton so they wouldn't have any like dyes and stuff bleaching the cotton which is obviously going to sit inside you so we'll see how I go with these. That's everything that I got for my groceries so I'm going to go ahead and pack this away now. So I finished putting away my groceries and I figured that I would taste test these M&Ms because yeah. This will be interesting. Pretzel flavored. I don't know. I feel like um tastes like cookie. Doesn't necessarily taste like pretzels. It's got that kind of like salty, sweet, savory kind of taste, which I do like. I actually personally prefer crispy M&M's over any M&M's. Peanut's okay. If I'm gonna get peanut, I do like to just get Reese's Pieces or like peanut butter cups with chocolate. I think those are really good. Um, but yeah, these are nice. But yeah, these ain't too bad. As I said, it's like that savory sweet kind of taste, which I do like mixing the two together sometimes. But um, yeah, right now it is currently 3 p.m. I feel like all I've done today is just vlog in the car for you guys, but Right now what I need to do is finish editing a video for Wednesday, it's currently Monday today. So I'm going to do a little bit of editing and then I guess I'll check in with you guys in a bit. So I currently just have some chicken tenders in the oven and then I'm going to probably put together half of this salad, drop off those chicken tenders toss it in with the salad and that's my dinner. I'm having a bit of an early dinner this evening. Typically I don't have dinner till like 7 or so, but I'm trying to get it out of the way early because I still have to finish editing that video. And I gotta do some like self-maintenance things like my nails and that always takes me ages to do. So I'm gonna have dinner now. I'll finish prepping it and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. So this is pretty much my dinner for this evening. Caesar salad with some chicken tenders chopped up and thrown in there as well. I'm gonna go ahead and watch The Simpsons and eat this. All right, so right now I'm about to go ahead and do something about these nails because they look atrocious in my own standards. They're actually um, kind of painful. I've been doing a lot of hand sanitizing lately, a lot of hand washing as we all should be. And I just feel like my hands and cuticles are the driest they've ever been. My nail beds are like crazy dry that they actually hurt, like my fingernails are in pain. As I might have mentioned earlier, I did go ahead and let my nails kind of like breathe for a minute, but I want to give myself a bit of a manicure right now because this is just, this ain't it. <laughs> a lot of you guys know that I do my own manicures, pedicures, all of that, and I do use this trusty baby right here. It's looking a little beat up, but it gets the job done. So yeah, I do my own gel polish. It's kind of dirty in there, isn't it? Whoops, it's like dusty and all that. But um, yeah, I do my own manicures and pedicures with gel polish. And I like to use the Sally Hansen range. So I use the base coat and top coat and I typically like to use their colors as well. I feel like they are very long lasting and they really reinforce your nails as well and make them stronger. But just for color wise, I'm gonna use the Opalac gel polish in the shade Rise and Grind today. When I cut my nails and they're super short, I like to go with a very simple natural color. So I don't know if you guys can tell, but yeah, this is a very natural nude 
kind of shade so i'm gonna go ahead and do my nails but i kind of just wanted to sit and talk with you guys for a little bit about the current situation and i'm gonna do my nails at the same time so what i like to do to start off with is i will go ahead and file the shape i typically do like a nice rounded nail and even though my nails are very short at the moment so they can really only be square i do like to round off the edges so that when they grow it's easier for me to maintain that shape later on but anyways i was just catching up on the news i typically don't sit and watch like the nightly news report i just catch up on little segments online and i was watching the news for what is currently going on here in australia and unfortunately for some areas the pandemic is not easing up we were doing really really well in terms of having little to no cases a lot of the cases that were developing there were only like say a couple a day and they came from people who arrived back home from overseas we were actually staying in hotel quarantine and then they developed symptoms and the virus within that contained situation so there was definitely no community transmission i know in the u.s it is very different the situation over there is completely different to what it is over here we hadn't had any community transmission for a couple of months i know for my state queensland we hadn't had any community transmission since like may i think and we are now at the very beginning of august and there's a bit of a scare happening what had happened is there were two women two younger women they actually flew up back home here to queensland via sydney but they came from melbourne and melbourne victoria at the moment is currently going through a crazy stage four lockdown as of today they're in a stage four lockdown so last week what had happened was it became known that these two females had been, I guess, just out in the community doing their thing while at the time unknowingly potentially spreading COVID-19. So these two people have received, I think there's three actually, there's three now, but they've received a lot of backlash from the community saying that they brought the virus into our state, we were doing so well, which yeah, my state has been doing really well. Things have been opening up again, people have been going back to work, restrictions were being lifted. But right now we are currently on high alert to watch for symptoms and such because these people who came back from a hotspot in another state visited a lot of areas in my city, which in turn gave the potential for the virus to be Red. So my opinion on the whole thing, it was very ignorant of them to do that. The rule for coming back into this state, if you have been to a hotspot, is that you have to quarantine. And quarantining means that you have to pay for that yourself. The government no longer funds that. So for anybody who's overseas and doesn't exactly know what I'm talking about, basically if you return from overseas or a state in Australia where COVID-19 is still a thing, you must be admitted into quarantine. So the government has set up hotels specially put aside for people who potentially could have or have the virus. And in the past, they were paying for that, they were funding that, but now it's to the point where it's like, if you are returning from anywhere, you gotta pay for it yourself. And it's pretty expensive, 3,000 or so dollars, and you have to stay there for 14 days in quarantine. From what the news says, these women who came back into our state put down false details on their declaration when they flew back in, and they continued on with their lives. Meanwhile, they actually had contracted COVID-19 and they were potentially spreading it throughout the community. So now there's been one other person who contracted it from them because they ate at the same restaurant that they were at. And now a lot of people in my city are currently going to get tested. So it's pretty crazy. But yeah, when I went out today, as you guys saw, I did wear a mask. And while it isn't necessary, I just feel like better safe than sorry, you know? And there's no harm in it. Like wearing a mask 
what what is the big deal in wearing a mask like it's not anything that is really inconveniencing me so I don't see what the big deal is when it comes to wearing masks I know there's been a lot of controversy on that but I personally don't think there's anything wrong with wearing a mask like it's literally a piece of cloth if it's something that is going to help with preventing the spread of the virus or if it's going to even act as like a symbol to make people realize like okay there's a lot of people wearing masks like this is a thing we should be concerned about because yeah i feel like perhaps in my city i felt like people were getting a little bit too comfortable with things opening back up social distancing was becoming something that was less and less maintained but with this scare now i feel like people are going back to realizing like okay yep this pandemic it ain't over yet but going back to what i was saying about these women who brought the virus back into my state that i live in a lot of people have condemned them and are saying that they need to go to prison for life like they need to be penalized for what they have done yes i do agree that what they did was ignorant and definitely selfish i mean you can't say that they didn't know what they were doing because they as the media says, lied on their declarations. However, there's been a lot of allegations saying that they are, <laughs> I saw one thing, one article that said that they are bio, bio health terrorists, something like that. And I was like, okay, like, the, I don't think that these women came back and were like, oh, you know what? we're gonna spread the virus around, we're gonna go run around the town and just spread it out like as much as we can. I really don't think that was their intention. It's not like they're out there like, yeah, let's spread out this virus, let's get everybody infected. No, I don't think that was something that they intentionally were doing. So I wouldn't call them bio, whatever the word was, but I think that, yeah, what they did was really, really ignorant. And I do believe that there should be consequences for their actions. The thing that I am very frustrated by for what I've seen in the media is that, you know, they've taken photos of these girls and plastered them all over the media and basically put a face to the story, right? However, just a few weeks ago when the story leaked of the security guards who were sleeping with the quarantined people in the hotel which is potentially what started the whole second wave of this pandemic i didn't see any photos of the security guards i didn't see any photos of the people who were in hotel quarantine like where's their faces like i don't know i just think yeah a lot of people are putting a lot of hate towards these girls it's come to the point where people are like commenting on the way that they look and making stupid assumptions and just it's just very disappointing and i feel like this whole thing has really brought out everybody's true colors yeah that's just my two cents on it all but i just really hope that everybody is staying safe staying sane i know that melbourne has officially gone into a stage four lockdown which means that they're not allowed to leave their house they can go grocery shopping but only within a five kilometer radius from their home which is three miles for those of you guys who use that metric system they could only go outside for like fresh air and exercise for an hour a day and if you're going to be doing grocery shopping only one member of the household can go so it's like how does that work there's a curfew of 8 to 5 a.m is when everybody must be home and there's just a lot of businesses that are closing down and people who are losing jobs and it's just it's really it's really sad and i i don't know i really pray for everybody and hope that everybody is staying safe and just oh man like i really really hope that we can all get through this because yeah it it sucks like i know that all that is happening in Melbourne but I really do feel I really really do feel for that and I mean you just never know if that's going to happen here in Queensland as well so it just really goes to show that this ain't over till it's over like we really need to be diligent with 
social distancing. It's scary times and I really don't know what the future holds, but what can we do? We can only do what we can. So I just really hope that everybody is not stressing out too much. I know it's really hard not to stress about it, especially when there's other things that are factored into this, like not being able to work, finances, money, all that, bills. I know it's stressful. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't even know what to say to help the situation, but I just really hope that everybody is able to get through it. Anyways, I've pretty much finished filing the shape of my nails and oh my goodness, you guys, they're so short. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and um, paint these and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. So I kind of got caught up with doing my nails, but they're done. They look so different to me, you guys. Like a couple of days ago, they were just so long and now they're just like, <laughs> but yeah, finished doing my nails. I kind of just spent the past hour editing my next upload, but I think now it's 10 p.m. So I'm gonna kind of wind down, go and take a shower, relax and get ready for bed. I actually want to start incorporating a more of a routine where I tell myself that I'm going to shower at a specific time and then get into bed at a specific time because oh, I want to tell you my sleep pattern is whack. It's whack. I want to sleep early, but I have a lot of trouble with sleeping early. I was actually um, at the chemist today when I went to chemist warehouse. I was trying to figure out like what a good sleeping like a more natural sleeping medicine would be. Alan recommended to me melatonin, but I couldn't find anything specifically with that. A lot of the sleeping remedies that I found were like magnesium, valerian, I think were the ingredients, but I couldn't find anything with melatonin. So if you guys have any recommendations, let me know, because I didn't just want to buy the first thing that it picked up off the shelf that said it would be good with sleep. Kind of want to do my research before I you know get anything but i feel like having something like that that can help me get a little bit more relaxed and like unwind before bed would help me a lot it probably doesn't help that i stay up editing videos and like you know doing all that late in the evening i definitely need to set more of a structured schedule for myself where i tell myself at this specific time no more computer like no more laptop no more editing like just chill because I'm definitely the type of person like once I set my mind to do something I'm going to keep doing it till it's done and I don't take breaks which is not the best and I really need to start doing that especially when it comes to my sleep but um anyways I'm looking at myself in the monitor right now <laughs> in the monitor in the viewfinder I look really weird is it my makeup I'm gonna kind of wrap up this vlog here get ready and go to bed I want to try out the pimple patch I don't know if you guys can notice, but I got a real big bad boy right here and yeah, it's going down, but I feel like this is going to really help to suck whatever is left in there out. And these patches are humongous, like that's a big patch. Yeah, I'm excited to try those. They actually... They smell like tea tree. I can really smell the tea tree oil in them. I have that one pimple to put it on, so we'll see how this works. I mean, the fact that it is a little less expensive is a good thing. So yeah, I'll try those out and I'll let you guys know how they go in the next vlog. But before I end off this vlog, so today's little message or lesson, I don't even know what I'm gonna call this. So the first thing that comes to mind for a topic this is actually something that I was thinking about as I was driving home today and it is expectations. Now, this is something that I have learned about over the years and I'm still learning about this to this day, but it's basically the idea that you can't expect things from other people. And I know that's a very broad kind of statement to make, like, yeah, obviously we can't expect things from other people, but I mean as in even minor things like the way somebody treats you, you cannot expect another person to treat you the way that you want them to treat you. For example, you're walking down the street, you walk past somebody and you smile and they don't smile back. And in your mind, you instantly think that's rude because you have this expectation, I smile to you, like why are you gonna be so rude and not smile back? But you gotta to get to that point where the person not smiling back doesn't get to you. For example, let's say myself at work 
let's say somebody was rude to me. I used to take that really too hard. Like I used to get really affected by the energy that they gave me. But that's because I had this expectation that if I am nice and kind to this person, then I should receive the same energy back. But it's not about that. Everybody chooses to act their own way. Everybody is their own way. Everyone has their own thoughts and opinions about everything. So we can't expect people to treat us the way that we want them to or to think the same way that we do. And this comes with like relationships as well, like families, partners, work relationships, business, everything. Having high expectations really does, not to say this in a bad way, but it kind of does set you up for disappointment if you let that affect you in that way like you can have expectations but if things don't turn out the way that you expect them to or somebody doesn't treat you the way that you expect them to it is your choice to react the way that you react if i'm giving somebody the energy that i'm giving them then i should receive it in return but it's not always like that and it's all about kind of the <laughs> How do I put this? Like mastering that and overcoming that and being like, okay, somebody did me wrong or okay, somebody wasn't nice to me or okay, that thing didn't turn out the way that it did. So be it. Like that's that's just the way that it turned out. It's, it's about not holding that expectation so high to the point where if it doesn't turn out the way that you expect it to, you let it really negatively affect you. And this is something that I even remember dealing with as a kid, I remember I got this video game, right? And I was so excited to play it, but the video game that I received as a gift wasn't compatible with the computer that I was going to install it on. So I got super excited, tried to put the CD into the computer to play this game and it wouldn't install. Like it just wasn't compatible with the computer. And I was so, disappointed because I'd hyped myself up and had this expectation that I was going to play the game. I'd visualized myself playing the game. Like I'd already had this expectation of the outcome. Like I've got the game, I'm going to play it and it's going to be so fun. Put the game in, it didn't work. And I was so upset and I remember just being so sad to the point where like, I didn't even cry. I was just like down, like down and I'll never forget it. But that was definitely something that I remember as a child. When it comes to having expectations, like having an expectation for something and not having it work out the way that I had visualized it to. So in the end, I ended up having to return the game and I never got to play the damn game, but I was okay. Like, it was all right. Like I was temporarily sad about it, but in the end I got over it. So yeah, like I said, this is something that I am still, working with and working on today is i'm not perfect you guys i can talk about this stuff but that's not to say that it's not a lesson that i am still working through myself so yeah i guess i kind of just wanted to talk about expectations for a minute because that was something that i was thinking about as i was driving home today is that you know we hype ourselves up so much and we have this expectation of how we want things to turn out or how we want other people to treat us or how we want to do things for ourselves and if they don't turn out that way then we get super disappointed which is fine it's okay to have expectations but it's all about not letting things get to you when they don't turn out to be what you expect them to be it's all about the the result and like the outcome of your feelings we have some variable control over the way things turn out but not entirely because at the end of the day all we can really truly control is ourselves and our feelings and how we react to things so yeah i hope my little story was of some value to anybody but if you guys enjoyed this vlog and you're still here at the end watching don't forget to give it a thumbs up like before you leave it and hit the red button down below before you go so you can subscribe to my channel if you want to see more from me. And with that being said, I am going to definitely go and get ready for my shower, relax. As I said, I'm going to give you guys an update on these pimple patches in the next vlog. And until then, I will talk to you in the comments and I'll see you guys in my next video.